Hey, welcome to Rob Paints Models. In today's video, we're going to be painting the horrors from the Eyes of the Nine Warband for Warhammer Underworlds. Now, I'm going to be doing most of this with the airbrush and then some blending and glazing afterwards. We're going to start with a prime of grey. This is Vallejo's uh, grey surface primer. And we're going to be doing this over the entire model, including the bases. And we're going to start by using Nagaroth Knight through the airbrush. And I'm only actually painting the underside and the sides of the uh, horror here. So I'm going to try and leave the white, well, grey primer on the top surfaces because I want it to retain that uh, bright colour and it'll be useful for when I spray another colour over the top so it will appear lighter than the colour that will go over the top of the Nagaroth Knight here. Now I'm going to be using Altdorf Guard Blue, and this is pretty thin, but not super thin. And I'm going to be spraying this from above in a zenithal pattern. And you can see that where the grey primer is shining through there, it's a lot brighter than where the uh, blue is layering up over the purple. And that gives us an extra highlight on the top of the head there. The purple acts as a kind of pre-shade. Now I'm using Araman Blue, and I've thinned this down quite a lot so it's very translucent. And I'm just using this to lightly tint the topmost highlights there, just so it shifts it slightly towards green, which is a, everyone knows, turquoise is a magical colour. So uh, it makes it look a little bit more ethereal and otherworldly. Now once I've blown that through my airbrush, I've still got a little bit left in the bottom of my airbrush here, you can see. I'm taking a single drop of white paint, this is VMA white which is a good airbrush white paint, mixing that with the remnants of the Araman blue that's in my airbrush cup here to get a very 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 light version of that colour. And I'm just using that to highlight around the eyes on the face here just so it makes them pop out and a little bit on the hand where the uh, OSL for the flame is going to be. Now I'm going to use uh, Terminator Stone Air, and I'm going to be using this to prime, kind of base coat, the uh, flame areas. So on the Blue Horror, these are the flames that he's casting and emitting from his hands there. And I'm going to get some of the overspray onto his hands to create a uh, object source lighting effect. And I'm also going to be using this to completely base coat all of the Brimstone Horrors. Now I'm using some flash git yellow. This is the air version, which is a little bit thinner than the uh, regular version. And I'm just going to spray that onto the flames, leaving a little bit of that Terminator stone right at the base of the flames there, the brightest part. I'm using my finger here to try and make sure I don't get any of the overspray of the flash git yellow on the rest of the model. Wasn't that bothered about the Terminator stone because it actually creates a nice little highlight where I'm going to glaze some yellow later to create uh, a, a more of the OSL effect. But uh, with the other colours that follow that, you want to try and avoid overspraying onto the rest of the model with them because it will look a bit weird. Now I'm using some Troll Slayer Orange. This is just regular Troll Slayer Orange, and I'm just doing that about halfway down the yellow areas that I've done before. Again, trying not to get overspray on the rest of the model from this because this yellow colour, this orange colour, wouldn't really travel that far. You just get a kind of soft yellow glow off the light rather than these gradients that you get on the flames themselves. So again, you can see here, it's going down about halfway down that yellow with the Troll Slayer Orange on the Brimstone Horrors as well.
Now I'm using Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm just doing that again, halfway down the orange area, in order to create uh, a bit more of a uh, gradient, petering it out here. Again, make sure not to get the overspray on the rest of the model. And do the same on the Brimstone Horrors. Also spraying a little bit around their feet as well, because I don't want the source of their heat to be the ground, I want the source of their heat to be uh, the insides of their bodies, their mouths essentially. Now I'm going to use a little Vallejo Model Air Armor Brown here, and I'm just going to spray the very tips of the flames with this, just to kind of suggest that it's um, thinning out, petering out into uh, maybe a smoky effect. There's no smoke on these models, but it just kind of sells the effect a little bit more if you have a little dark spot on the end there, the, the flame tips. Now on the Brimstone Horrors, I'm using some Terminator Stone Air Paint here, and I'm just spraying this into the kind of mouth area, the face, I guess, of the Brimstone Horrors. I'm also going to spray this on their backs, which is essentially their bums, in order to try and suggest that the source of all of their heat and their, their fire is actually coming from within them rather than from the ground. I'm going to use some VMA white and I'm just going to try and get this into the middle of that Terminator stone that I just sprayed as well. Again, a little bit of overspray is not a big deal here. Now I'm using some Lamenters yellow and I'm using this straight from the pot with quite a big brush here and I'm just slapping this on all over the, the flame effects. I'm letting it pool in all of the recesses Technically, that's not really accurate for the fire, but it looks correct to my eye when I look at it, so it's all fine. And this does two things. This colorizes the uh, light colors, the white and the Terminator stone. Also smooths out all of the blends between the different airbrushed colors as well, which is why I was just slapping it on the entire model. Now, if you can't get hold of Lamenta's yellow, because it is discontinued now, this is basically just yellow ink thinned with water. So you can get some Vallejo Game Color yellow ink and thin it down with water, about one part ink to two parts water will get you about the same consistency as Lamenta's yellow and the color is exactly the same. So you can see I'm just doing another coat, just trying to make sure it goes into the uh, mouths. And I'm also going to go through on the blue horror with this and just blend that into the hands there. This is where we're going to get that cool OSL effect from the flames. And we're going to continue that all the way down with the areas which are kind of nearby and within sight of the uh, flames. So that would be cap getting some light cast from the flames there. So I'll be down on the, on the tops of the arms there and on the side of the, his face because one of his hands is slightly lower down than the other. And on the top of his head. And you can feather this out with just some clean water on it or just a clean brush quite easily. Because this ink is super translucent. It just tints the surface. And it doesn't tend to leave any watermarks either, which is really, really good. It's a big shame that they discontinued these, because they were very useful. As you can see, it just kind of turns that blue skin area up on the top there. A little bit more green, because when you're casting a yellow light onto a blue surface, it will appear slightly greener. But we don't want it to be a really bright yellow, because that would be a bit weird. Now I'm using some titanium white. This is just artist acrylics titanium white because it's nice and smooth. Very thick, very easy to paint with and cover in one, one coat. Which makes it great for doing these little highlights. And I'm just painting in all of the little kind of teeth in air quotes on the brimstone horrors and also painting in the little eyes. I'm not doing anything more than just dotting these with some white paint because they don't really need anything else. They don't, have, they don't need pupils or anything else like that. Just making sure these are pure white and the only spots of pure white on the models actually helps uh, make those effects visible.
Now I'm using that white paint while I've got it and I'm just dotting in the eyes of the horror as well at the same time. Just because, yeah, I was doing eyes. I was in the right mood to do them. Now I'm using some Reichland Flesh Shade straight out of the pot and I'm just very carefully uh, brushing this into the mouth area on the brimstone horrors and around the eye sockets trying not to get it onto the white itself but just getting it into the recesses around it just it's it's kind of weird because it's the idea of creating shade on a being that's made entirely of fire so there wouldn't be any shade but it looks wrong to not have anything surrounding those so I'm doing it anyway and I think it turns out looking fine and kind of how you expect even if it's not necessarily 100% realistic for you know a plasma based entity but uh, it ends up looking good and gives you a little bit of definition and delineation between those uh, areas and I'm also going to just do exactly the same thing on the blue horrors eye sockets as well again trying not to get it onto the white paint but I will be going over them again with a little bit of white once this washes dry just to touch up and make sure it's all nice and bright and while I've got the Reichland flesh shade out I'm also running this into the top parts of the flame effects as well again it seems weird conceptually to shade flames but it just creates a little bit of more three-dimensional depth to the models it picks out those little recesses and it looks right at the end and it dries a lot more kind of translucent than it actually looks when it's wet so when it's wet it looks quite dark and like quite stark but when it dries it's actually quite a subtle effect and it, it adds a lot of depth to the models As you can see, I'm going back in now with some more white paint, just touching up any areas that I uh, got the Reichland Flesh Shade on, now that it's dried. Now we're going to go around, we're going to detail up the blue horror. So, you know, we've done the flame effects, we've done the skin. Now we're going to finish off the eyes. So we painted these white in the previous step on the uh, during the flame section. And we're just going to run some bloodletter glaze into the eye sockets. And we're letting this tint the whites of the eyes just a little bit. And this is... Uh, with the next step going to turn them a little bit of an orange which is nice contrasting colour to that turquoise blue we've got going on there on the skin so you can see once the blood letters dry we're taking some lamentous yellow and glazing that again over the eyes letting it tint everything and it will combine together to create a kind of red orange yellow kind of look on the eyeballs And then once all that's dry, I'm just going in and I'm just dotting the eyeballs very, very carefully with a tiny little dot of white. Trying to leave some of the uh, orange and yellow colours that are from the glazes visible.
Now this is a bit of a weird one because I'm trying to colour match to the skin tone plus the OSL effect that's on top of his head there. So I found that by mixing Temple Guard Blue and some Krieg Khaki together I could colour match to that. And then I'm taking some white and adding that to the, my colour matched mix in order to create a highlight colour. Now technically I probably should have highlighted his uh, brow on his forehead and his face before I applied the OSL effect with the Lentus Yellow, but you know, you live and learn. So I'm just using this colour to just highlight his brow and kind of the bridge of his beak, nose, I'm not sure what that is. Either way, it's just adding a little bit of detail around those eye sockets and drawing our attention there, which is what we want. Especially since he's got four eyes rather than two. Now I'm going to base coat his beak and all of his claws and talons and little horns and other bony sharp bits with some Incubi Darkness. Um, I thin this down and I'm going to be doing about, I think it's three thin layers of this in order to get a nice smooth coat. It's not over very many areas so it doesn't take very long to do. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white to it just to create a nice highlight colour. And I'm going to draw some very thin lines from about halfway down the beak towards the lower edge. And all, all the way to the tip and also highlight edge highlight the uh, top of the beak and the sides of the beak there. And I'm going to do this on the claws on his feet. Not on his hands because those were being lit up by the flame effect so I don't need to paint those again and also the horns around his neck, which I actually forgot to paint at this point, but I went back and did them exactly the same way later. And I'm doing a couple more layers again, just adding a little bit more white each time. Not going all the way up to pure white, but just making sure it's got a little bit of that green tinge from the ink by darkness in there. And if it's a little bit too much, just go back in with some ink by darkness and touch it up back in the darkest areas again probably only took about 10 minutes to do the entire model this way and it looked pretty good at the end Now I'm going to base coat the tongue and as much of the inside of the mouth as I can reach and am brave enough to try and paint with some Screamer Pink. I'm actually using a relatively big synthetic brush for this and I don't really know why. I think it's because I was scared of jabbing it into the back of the mouth and potentially uh, busting the point on one of my good brushes. But it took a few coats in order to cover sufficiently with this. Again, trying not to get it onto the teeth that I've already painted. Again, if you did this before the previous step it would probably be uh, better and a bit easier to do because then you can just paint over that any mistakes you've made with the Incubi Darkness. But I managed it without having to do any touch-ups. Round of applause for me. And now I'm taking some Empress Children and I'm just highlighting the tongue. And I think I can take a little bit of white, mix it in with my Empress Children and just do a little kind of dot on the end of the tongue as well.
little, little, little dot of white kind of just right on the tip of the tongue there. Makes it look a bit wet. Always a good thing for a tongue. That sounded really weird. I don't know why I said it. So now I'm doing highlights across the rest of the horror here. I'm using Temple Guard Blue, which is kind of a greenish blue. It's a little bit lighter than our Altdorf Guard Blue kind of base tone that we've used. And it's uh, not quite as light as Araman Blue, so it's in a weird kind of halfway point there. And I'm just doing some edge highlights, and I'm just picking out kind of the really raised kind of ridged type areas, so around his toes there you can see. Um, the bones on his ankles I'm going to pick out as well. And any areas that look like they might like be catching a little bit of a reflection of the ambient light, not necessarily the flame light sources, which is what whatever lights in the room there. And it's just creating a little bit of definition on the, some areas which may be getting lost because the airbrush doesn't catch everything in exactly the way that you want it to. So the tops of the knees, for example, are really good candidates for these kinds of highlights. Just makes them pop a little bit more. And this is probably the most time consuming kind of single brush painting task on the entire model, so I'm going to speed it up in a moment. So you can see there, just picking out that knee there just makes it nice and bright and a bit more prominent. And I also do a few uh, lines down the back of the tail there as well, just to pick out the edge that's kind of running down there. And some of the little uh, spots that are on them. I also do this thing where along the tails or tentacles, I guess they're tails aren't they? I paint um, straight lines going perpendicular to the, t uh, the direction of the tail so it's kind of crossing over the raised highlight there and it makes it look like it's kind of got a bit of texture to his skin like it's not perfectly smooth. So you can either leave it as just this, the one edge highlight, or you can do that to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of detail. It doesn't take much longer. To be honest, it only took about an extra couple of minutes longer to do those lines and add a little bit of extra texture to the model, and I think it makes a lot of difference for very little extra effort. On some areas where you want it to be a little bit brighter, just take some white paint, mix it in with your Temple Guard Blue until you've got the tone that you want and then just go over those edge highlights again just to make them pop a little bit more add a little bit more reflection to your model so you can see here I am just doing those little sharp lines perpendicular to all the surfaces just trying to add a bit more texture a bit more interest to some otherwise perfectly smooth surfaces also picking out the knuckles and uh, the rest of the hands that don't have flame attached to them because some blue horrors have, what, three, four arms? I can't remember exactly. This one has three, but I think some of them have more than three. And uh, only two of them do the, do the flamey thing. The other one just is just for punching, I guess. So you can see I'm just kind of putting a few dots along the tail there as well, just to kind of highlight where the uh, lines cross over the edge highlight with a little bit of a brighter colour, just again adding a little bit more white. 
So now on to painting the gold, and I base coat all of the gold with Balthazar gold. This is probably one of my favorite golds that Games Workshop makes. It covers pretty much in one coat, with just a little bit of thinning to make sure it goes on smooth. And it's a really nice orange tone. It's really, really good as a base coat for any gold color. And the uh, aluminium flake in it isn't too bad. I mean, I know Games Workshop technically uses the same size aluminium flake in all of their metallic paints, but for some reason I find in the Balthazar gold it's not quite as stark as in, uh, say, Retribute gold, which I find has quite a, a stark looking uh, aluminium flake going on in it for some reason. Might be just something to do with the way the pigment interacts. And now Liberator Gold to highlight that. This is again one of my favourite golds that uh, Games Workshop makes. Doesn't cover very well in one coat, but is an excellent highlight colour for, say, Balthazar Gold. It's a bit of a cooler tone, but generally speaking, when I paint gold, I like to start with a kind of a warm base colour and then cool it down as I go towards the edge highlights. So going from Balthazar Gold to Liberator Gold and then eventually to a mix of Liberator Gold and VMA Chrome for the very brightest highlights gives me a nice gold effect that I'm pretty happy with and I've basically been using it for any time I want to paint a kind of uh, aged gold look on pretty much everything at the moment. Just being careful not to get it on the skin there because touching that up is a nightmare. Just use the edge of the brush in order to pick up the raised surfaces. Don't worry about getting it down on the sides too much, because uh, I didn't. I didn't worry about that at all, because I didn't even try, because I knew it would be an absolute nightmare if I got it on the blue skin to tidy up. bracelet that's on his uh, non-flamey wrist is actually surprisingly difficult to get. I have to be very careful and just use the very tip of my brush very very gently in order to try and pick that out. It's quite difficult. So take your time with that step. The last thing you want is to get a big splodge of gold all over your model and then have to go back and try and tidy up an airbrush blend. So now this is some VMA Chrome plus Liberator Gold here. I don't go to pure VMA Chrome on this model, but you could if you wanted to. And I'm just doing the very kind of topmost points of the uh, gold there just to get those bright highlights in. Doesn't take much longer this step, it's um, just an extra few minutes over painting the gold itself, so it's, it's always worth doing this because the more highlights you add, the less time each one takes. So, you know, the most time consuming part from any model is base coating, and then every extra highlight takes less time than the previous one because you're highlighting a smaller area than before. So, adding a few extra ones doesn't really take much extra time. And now I'm using some Reichland Flesh Shade again, straight from the pot, and I'm just putting this into the recesses. I'm running it along the sides of the gold parts as well, just because I didn't paint the sides of the gold bracelets, for example. And so the Reichland Flesh Shade is going to cling into those creases and those recesses and completely hide that fact for me, as well as creating a nice little bit of contrast and a little bit of kind of black lining, essentially, between the skin and the gold. And uh, as you can see here, it's kind of splosh it on the arm, the arm there. And if you get too much on, just use a clean brush to pull it off or feather it out with some water and all will be well. It will dry a bit more matte where this is, but because of the uh, consistency of the wash, it should flow into the recesses and the recesses should be matte. And generally speaking, it, when you're shading a metallic, it's actually quite good for the shadows to be more matte than the highlights. And 
barn in the area. I just touch up the flames a little bit with some Reichland Flesh Shade. Same way that I did with the Brimstone Horror earlier in the video. Also try and get it between the fingers a little bit to try and create some shadows. And there we have our blue horror. So that's how I paint the horrors for the eyes of the nine. You can see there's purple underneath, green on top. Gives us a nice kind of demonic, otherworldly type look to the skin. And we've got some OSL effects from the flames. It's all looking pretty nice. So this is uh, the first part in the Eyes of the Nine videos. There's going to be, I think, four in total. The next one's going to be covering how to do the bases for these models. And then we've got the Karak Acolytes coming up after that. And then the Zangor and Sorcerer in the final part. So thank you to all of my patrons who made this possible. Thank you to everyone watching and who, all of the subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, you can click the button give us a subscribe give us a like as well comment below with your thoughts on this color scheme and the eyes of the nine in general and yeah thanks for watching i'll see you later bye